Oh my, that's called a spine <laughs> tingle. Spine tingle. No, that's called a rim check. Okay, Reed, try not to fuck up this time. Yep, I got it, I got it. All right, let me talk. Welcome to Rim Check, I'm Rita Horner, and, and I'm... I'm Welcome to Rim Check. I'm Reed Horner. And I'm Ian Dolan. And this is the show where NBA nerds try to be funny. The Super Team era in the NBA is officially over. And now, like Batman and Robin, Michael and Dwight, Paul Pierce and Terrible Takes, it's all about the duos in the NBA. Finally, the Kawhi sweepstakes is over, and he and shockingly Paul George are members of the LA Clippers. It seems like Kawhi was out here playing chess while everyone else was playing basketball. And the rumor is the reason it took so long for Kawhi to announce his free agency decision was because he was doing all of the communication with the front office via handwritten letters through the U.S. Postal Service. It's effective. It's effective. Kawhi actually first tried to recruit KD and Kyrie before Paul George since Uncle Dennis told him PG-13 isn't appropriate for him. As if this offseason hasn't been crazy enough, in a blockbuster trade, the Houston Rockets and the OKC Thunder have exchanged Chris Paul for Russell Westbrook which is kind of like trading in a broken down station wagon for a sports car without brakes. Westbrook's the, the sports car. No, I get it, I get it. Once again, Daryl Morey has shown he is willing to try anything to win a championship. Pairing Westbrook and Harden may not make the most basketball sense, but in this league, sometimes it's all about star power. Over the last five seasons, their usage rates are number one and two respectively, which means that the two of them sharing the floor could be a more awkward fit than Reed wearing skinny jeans. And the biggest loser of this trade is definitely Chris Paul, who tried his whole career to do what Kawhi just pulled off this year. But instead, Kawhi ended up in LA with another superstar, and Paul ended up on a rebuilding team in a city that's only claim to fame is inventing the shopping cart. Maybe the team with the most star power is the LA Lakers. They have LeBron James and Anthony Davis two arguably top three players in the league. Also, Davis ending up on the Lakers via a trade demonstrates the ability LeBron has had throughout his career to make things happen for his teams, both on and off the court. Well, that is until he tried to give AD his jersey number and Nike shut him down real quick. It just goes to show that at the end of the day, whether you're a Nike athlete or a child making their shoes, Nike is in charge. The Lakers have been all in on adding Kawhi before he decided on the Clippers, which left them with the free agency bargain bin to fill out the rest of their roster. DeMarcus Cousins and Avery Bradley being two of the most noteworthy signings. Both of those guys actually cut a ton of weight since last season, but that's probably just to make it easier for LeBron and AD to put the whole team on their backs. That's probably true, actually. We all know about the newly formed Super Duo in Brooklyn, but it came out that when Katie announced his decision to go to the Nets on Instagram, he hadn't actually told the front office he'd be joining the team. KD won't stay put at one organization. He moved from a small town in middle America to Silicon Valley, and now New York City, and does a majority of his communication through social media. Now that I think of it, he sounds like a typical millennial. Dude, you know he double-checked which account he was logged into on that one. Yeah. Or maybe this is all just one big conspiracy to avoid tampering charges. Dude, like half the league announced new deals at 6.01 on June 30th. Unless the NBA is doing contract negotiations speed dating style, tampering's not a thing anymore. You know what, Ian? I don't say this enough, but that was a really good point you just made. Thanks, man. And you know, with all this talk of duos, I just want to say that I'm really happy you're my co-host. Never saw Titanic. Did they kiss in Titanic? I think they had intercourse. Really? <laughs> <laughs>